Hello and welcome to a supplemental P5.js tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use local storage. Have you ever wanted your P5 sketch to start up where it last left off? Do you not feel like trying to figure out some kind of complex cloud database storage solution? Then you're in exactly the right place. Local storage is for you. If you're like me and you have a 90 day Wordle streak going, how does your phone or your computer know that you've been playing it every day? You didn't log in. You didn't sign up for anything. It just remembers you were there yesterday. If you go to a different computer, it doesn't know who you are. This is all due to local storage. Local storage means saving data locally in the browser itself, your browser on your computer and there only. It's not a robust database solution for user accounts or high scores and multiplayer games or anything that really needs proper network communication and data storage in the cloud. But for just having a P5 sketch that runs and picks some colors, and then the next time you run it, those colors come back just for you working locally on your own computer, it is just perfect. So here I am in this tutorial with a very basic P5.js sketch. It creates three sliders, each with a range between zero and 255, starting with the value of zero. Then in the draw loop, I pull the values from each slider and use them to set the color values of the background. Some red, a little bit of green, let's add a lot of blue, let's take out some of the green, let's add some more red, and there we have mwah, a beautiful pink. What if I want the next time I run this sketch to see that pink color again? It's not gonna happen just by rerunning the sketch. Anytime you run a P5.js sketch, whether you're loading it for the first time or rerunning it in the P5 web editor, it starts fresh. Local storage is something that comes as part of JavaScript and the browser API. It's part of the browser window object. And we could go through how to access, save, and retrieve data from local storage in plain JavaScript. But I'm here using P5, and wouldn't you know it, ah, mwah, if you needed another reason to love P5, it's got a set of helper wrapper functions that allow you to put things in local storage and retrieve them whenever it's convenient for you. There are only two functions you need to know in P5 to use local storage. They're both found in the P5 reference, store item and get item. They do exactly like what they sound like they do. Store item stores something in local storage, get item retrieves it from local storage. First thing first, I need to figure out when do I wanna store the red, green, and blue values in local storage. I could put that in the draw loop, like, oh, I'm animating, I'm animating, just store, 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 store. And that might be okay to do in some context. But I think here I can basically choose to save the values in local storage anytime I've used the slider and the value has changed. So here I've added the changed event, which executes whenever I've completed a change for the slider. There is a different event called input, which will continuously fire as I'm moving the slider around, but I think I can wait until I've completed my motion of the slider. Then in the function, I'll call the p5 store item function. Store item takes two arguments. I need a key, a unique string that names the piece of data I wanna save. In this case, I'll call it red. So the key to unlock the data is red, and the data is just the value of the R slider. And let me just add a console log to make sure I see when this event is happening. I'm gonna move the red slider, let go, and I see the 168 value, and it should be stored in local storage now. Then the question is, when do I wanna load the data? And I've kind of done this in a weird backwards way because I wanna save the data while I'm operating the sketch, but then I'm thinking about the future when I'm running it again, that I wanna retrieve the data. So right there in setup, the moment I create the slider, I should see if there is data available already stored that I can set the slider to the color value that I'm retrieving. Get item is the P5 local storage function to retrieve data. I'm very sorry to overcomplicate this video, but there's this new thing that's happening in the P5 web editor. When I type the word red as a string, it'll actually create this automatic color picker, which is kind of amazing and would allow me to do so many wonderful things, but it's getting in my way right now. So I'm gonna change the name of my key to red value. So now I'm retrieving the red value. If it doesn't exist, it will just give me the value null back. 
So as long as r is not equal to null, then I can set the value of that slider to whatever I retrieved from local storage. I'm gonna unclick auto refresh, which could add some walkiness if it's running and rerunning here. I'm gonna run the sketch. I'm gonna give myself a little bit of red. I'm gonna hit stop and I'm gonna run it again. Oh, local storage, where have you been all my life? All of the data is locally stored, so it's not going anywhere. It's just right there in your browser and it works. Oh, I love it. Let's add the same thing for green and blue. Let's see what we've got here. First, we create three sliders. Then we attempt to retrieve three values from local storage, a red value, a green value, and a blue value. If there's a red value, set the red slider. If there's a green value, set the green slider. Okay, this one I forgot to update. If there's a blue value, set the blue slider. And then make sure that any time I change any of those slider values, I store those three items. Now, technically, if I'm only changing the red slider, do I need to store the new green or blue? But it's easier just for me to not worry about it and always store all three anytime there's a change to any of them. Whoops, I have a little typo here. That needs to be a lowercase. Everything is case sensitive. And now let's run this again. Well, we start with that red value. Now let me add a little green, add a little blue, take the green down, get rid of all the red, more green, and stop. Okay, everybody, it's the moment of truth. Let's run the sketch again. I love it. One of the things that's really quite wonderful about local storage is it saves the data beyond any given session. Meaning, if I were to quit the browser, I'm gonna do that right now, then relaunch the browser, go to the P5 web editor, log in, <laughs> go back to my sketch, and run it. I still have my data! Oh, it's amazing! Now, if I were to open up a different browser, go to an incognito window, maybe open up this page on my phone, I wouldn't get these colors. It doesn't even matter if I'm logged into the P5 web editor. I'm gonna log out, go to that sketch, and it's still pulling that. It has nothing to do with any account or anything anywhere. It's just data that's being stored in the browser itself that's running on this laptop. Now it's really up to the browser to choose how it implements local storage. So it depends what browser you're actually using. But in almost all cases, I would imagine if you clear the cache or clear your browsing history, that local storage will also be cleared. If you wanna dive a little deeper and look at the data itself, you can look at your browser's developer tools. Here in Chrome, I wanna to go to application and then right here under storage, local storage. Now I can see the key and value for all the data that I'm storing. Now there's lots of extra stuff there. One, the P5 web editor makes use of local storage. Two, I've been playing around with this earlier today, so there's extra stuff in local storage. It is unique to the domain. So I can only have one red value, green value, or blue value for this P5.js preview window, which is what I'm actually seeing in the pane when the sketch runs. So amazingly, if I were to create a new sketch and call get item red value, I'd still have that value. So if I'm using local storage across multiple sketches and always staying in the P5 web editor, I've gotta be careful about my naming. Now to keep things simple, I stored red value, green value, and blue value all as separate items. But one of the nice things about what P5 does is it allows you to pass a JavaScript object and it will turn that into a string that can be saved in local storage and then unpack it back for you as a JavaScript object. So I don't know how you found this video and JavaScript objects might be new to you. I'll refer you to my tutorials about classes and objects and those types of things. But if that's familiar to you, let me show you how that works with this example. So for me, what I'd wanna do is create a new object. I'm gonna call it uh, colors and give it three properties. And then instead of storing individual numbers, I can store that full object associated with a single key. I'll just name the key colors and save the colors. This will also allow me to simplify these if statements because I don't need to check each of them individually. So 
So now I'm asking for a JavaScript object called colors. If it is not null, I can pull out the R, G, and B properties and assign it to the correct slider. Let's run the sketch again. Uh-oh, unexpected end of input. Oh, I just forgot an extra curly bracket here. So I don't have my data from before because I renamed everything. But I can make this nice purple color, hit stop, run it again, and there we go. Thank you to Adam Fider and others in the Twitch chat that are following along as I record this tutorial. There's this excellent post on web.dev slash storage for the web about different kinds of storage mechanisms session storage, cookies, the file system API, and I would encourage you to investigate those. This is also where you will find some of the downsides of using local storage. And in fact, it even says it should be avoided because it is synchronous, blocks the main thread, is limited to only five megabytes of data. But these are actually the reasons why I love local storage, because it's a really quick and really easy solution for having persistence without worrying about all sorts of asynchronous extra code and data. So if you just want proof of concept, ability to store some simple numbers, some simple data, some settings for your creative coding application, then I can't recommend it enough. I could keep going with this example. What if I used that color and drew in the canvas, and then every time you reloaded the page, you got elements of your drawing back? What if it were to tell you how many days in a row you drew? <laughs> All of these things are possible. I would love to hear from you in the comments. What is your scenario that you might like to use local storage with? I'll include extra examples linked from the video description that will go along with this video. And if there's anything that I really missed, I could do a follow-up video and address it or uh, come back to it on a future live stream. So thanks for watching. Hope this little extra P5 video helped you with your day and whatever you are coding. And I'll see you next time on The Coding Train.